This week, I've come to burgle your turrets. Welcome back to my ongoing series of turning over the garden wall into an army for turn of 28. I've been absolutely itching to make a war mount of some kind, and I have this toy that is absolutely perfect for one of the black turtles. While I could just cut up some sprues and coffee stir sticks to make a quick platform for my fodder to stand on, I want to further transform this toy into a true root horror of a scuttler. I recently made a video where I talk about how I design horrible things, and one of the things that's very important to me is anatomy when it comes to creature design. Now, I can already hear the comments pointing out that I'm using a giant tortoise, which doesn't look anything like a turtle. And more to the point, it doesn't look anything at all like the Feast of Charybdis from the official rulebook for Turn of 28. But I had an idea. If we look at sea turtle anatomy, they actually have these long finger-like digits in their flippers. And if we consider the lore for the world of Turn of 28, Let's assume for a moment that these giant mutant turtles have been infested by the root. Well, maybe those individual digits grow out into fairy fingers. If you're not already familiar with what fairy fingers are in horses, this is your warning, don't Google it. Now, for as how these turtles relate to the Feast of Charybdis, don't worry, we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. This style of conversion is pretty simple, all things considered. We start by removing all the extraneous limbs on our tortoise, then drill and pin some wire for the new fingers and its head. The original tortoise head would have worked fine for our purposes, but I have this Gachapon Stegosaurus toy, which I had eyed up to give the front legs a more interesting pose and change the silhouette of the neck and the head. From here, we make our patented mix of epoxy clays and I spend an absurd amount of time trying to mix them up because it's winter and everything here is hard. For the head of our new turtle, I'm just adding clay where I want to accentuate certain features, like giving it a weird gizzard thing on its neck, and making the mouth more like the beak of a snapping turtle. Using a bladed sculpting tool, I can quickly copy the texture of the original Stegosaurus toy, which is much easier than mimicking the scaled tortoise legs from earlier. Then for each of the clusters of root fingers, I'm just making one large central root and then filling in the space around it with smaller individual fingies. You could drill and pin every single one of these if you want to be absolutely certain that they don't fall off, but I'm just going to douse them in super glue once they've cured. The next day when everything is all set up, I fill in the gaps between the turtle leg and turtle fingers to give it a nice transition. I'll try to stop saying fingers from here on out. Now, at this point, I realize that you can have up to two Scuttler units in your army. So I, of course, made a second one off camera, a two-headed Florida freshwater turtle, if you're curious. But with our turtles ready to go, I decided the next step should be to make some fodder that would ride them into battle. One of the reasons Turn Up 28 is so universally loved is the fact that it's miniature agnostic. I love being able to go through my bits box and having the freedom to make my units out of any parts that I have on hand. For the melee fodder that would ride these scuttlers, I wanted them to be in a similar theme to the turtles. I grabbed some Urukai models that I've been holding onto because they look like they're armored up in a defensive shell, and for the most part are in these heroic poses that I think will look great on the back of the scuttlers. Digging into my parry miniatures, I can give them some head and weapon swaps, which will help break up the monotony of the identical armor. And then the last detail will of course be to give them some more root-like nose guards and pointy red caps. As of course, these are members of the red cap rotters. Hey, real quick, if you like these Turnip 28 videos, I've got some bad news. The series is going to be coming to an end, but I've got an idea for at least one more build video and I intend to end things with a bang. Now for some good news, I managed to snag a ticket to TurnipCon, so I will be there in person showing off my entire army. If you're coming, please be sure to say hi, and if you can't make it, be sure to subscribe because I will be making a video about TurnipCon and a full army showcase.
The last thing to know is I'm already working on plans for my next army and it's going to be even weirder than this one. If you want to see what that's all about and support the channel, consider signing up to my Patreon so you can join our coven and see what weird stuff I'm up to. The last thing this group needs is some platforms to ride our turtles. I've kept the construction for this very simple. Just scrap pieces of sprue, coffee stir stick, and super glue. Anywhere that there's a bit of fabric for like a banner, that's just coffee filter paper. And I'm filling in some of the gaps under the platform with leftover bits of epoxy clay that I've rolled into little roots. Also, lots of pointy weapons because I just want to make the silhouette look more interesting. These are all materials and techniques that I cover in great detail in the previous parts of this series. So if you haven't gone back and checked out my Turnip 28 playlist, be sure to do that after this video. Now, when I started this project, I said I'd talk about why the Black Turtles are a perfect proxy for Charybdis. If you're a fan of Turnip 28, you know that these units are depicted as crustaceans in the official rulebook. And don't get me wrong, the art is incredible and I love a good crab. But in Greek mythos, Charybdis is described as a sea monster. In some cases, she is just described as a giant whirlpool. So as far as I'm concerned, claws are pretty optional. Now that we've established that it just needs to be a sea monster, any ocean critter could technically fit the bill. But I wanted a little more symbolism than that. While the story of Charybdis is a tragedy, as she was punished by Zeus for aiding her father Poseidon, she is also used as a device for overcoming struggle from the Odyssey to Jason and the Argonauts. The Black Turtles are a symbol and source of evil in Over the Garden Wall. When consumed, they have the ability to corrupt their host, like the dog turning into the big scary wolf. But if you are strong enough, you can overcome that evil, like Auntie Whispers did. Maybe in this darker take on the story, these giant mutant turtles represent one last struggle for our heroes Wirt and Gregory, against the darkness, the beast, or the unknown itself. Thank you, as always, for watching this video, and a special thank you to my patrons who make series like this possible. While our story is coming to an end, I look forward to meeting you in the unknown for our final chapter. Until next time, I will see you very soon.